So someone tells you their name and three seconds later it's completely gone, like it never even entered your brain. But you remember their job, their dog's breed, where they went on vacation. Look, this isn't about having a bad memory. Your brain is actively deleting names to focus on something it thinks is more important. So today we're exposing why your brain treats names like spam emails. I'll show you what your brain prioritizes instead of names, why names are literally the hardest thing for your brain to remember, and there's this embarrassing truth about attractive people and names that actually makes perfect sense. Plus, I'll give you the weird hack that increases name recall by 80%. Let's get into it. So last week at a networking event, this woman goes, Gregory, I just met that guy five minutes ago. We talked for 10 minutes and I know he's a pediatrician from Amsterdam with twin daughters who play violin, but his name, it's gone. What is wrong with me? Nothing, nothing's wrong with you. See, your brain has a priority system for social encounters and names are at the absolute bottom. But once you understand why your brain does this, you can actually hack it. So here's what's actually happening when you meet someone new. Researchers at NYU and Harvard found that your amygdala and posterior cingulate cortex, well, these are your social evaluation centers, they're working over time. They're assessing value. Is this person important to me? Could they help me? Should I invest energy here? And while your brain is doing all these complex social calculations, it's using up most of your working memory. Think about it like your, your phone trying to download a huge file while you're streaming video, right? Something's gotta give. Now, Princeton researchers Willis and Todorov in 2006 found that we form impressions in as little as a tenth of a second. A tenth of a second! And these judgments include trustworthiness, competence, attractiveness, all happening before you even process their name. Your brain is literally running facial recognition software, analyzing microexpressions, processing voice tone, checking body language, all simultaneously, all unconsciously. And then, in the middle of all this complex analysis, there's this random sound to their name that has basically no immediate value. And your brain is like, Jessica, Jason, who cares? I'm trying to figure out if this person matters to our social world. See. Names are arbitrary sounds with no inherent meaning. But that confident handshake, that genuine smile, their job title, your brain catalogs all of that because it helps determine their social value. Now let's talk about why names are literally the worst thing for your brain to remember. Research from the University of Sussex shows that names are what's called arbitrary labels. They have no logical connection to the person. Think about it. I mean, if I tell you someone is a baker, your brain has a whole category for that. Images, smells, associations. But if I tell you their name is a baker, that's just the sound. No category, no connection. And here's what's wild. Your brain processes names in a completely different region than other personal information. Job, lifestyle, hobbies, those go in your semantic memory, connected to meaning. Now, names? They go in this isolated phonological loop that's basically your brain's temporary sticky note. But wait, it, it actually gets worse. Your brain actively deprioritizes information it can't categorize. So while you're trying to remember Jennifer, your brain is going, this data has no connection, no association, no semantic hooks, delete. I mean, you can remember that she has three cats because your brain has a category for cat people. You remember she's from London because your brain has a category for British people. But Jennifer? That's just noise to your brain. Unless… Okay, so here's the embarrassing part. Research from 2015 in the Journal of Experimental Psychology shows we're significantly better at remembering names of people we find attractive. This actually makes sense. See when you're attracted to someone, romantically, professionally, whatever, your brain releases dopamine. And dopamine is like a miracle grow for memory formation. It literally strengthens neural connections. But here's what's really happening. Attraction makes your brain assign higher value to that person. Instead of, are they useful, your brain decides, yes, they are definitely useful. And suddenly, their name has value. Think about celebrities. You remember their names, right? That's because your brain has categorized them as valuable. They've passed a relevance threshold. And this is why you always remember your boss's name, but forget the interns. 
Why you remember the attractive person from the party, but not their friend. Your brain is ruthlessly practical about what it stores. Now this value assessment system made perfect sense 50,000 years ago, when you only met about, what, 150 people in your entire life. But today, we, we meet that many people in a month. So what do we do? So here's a technique that changes everything. You need to give your brain a reason to care about the name. And the simplest way, Make it weird. When someone says, I'm Jennifer, don't just repeat, nice to meet you, Jennifer. That's useless. <laughs> Instead, create an instant ridiculous association. Jennifer, she's Jennifer Aniston's evil twin. Bob, he's SpongeBob's depressed uncle. I, I know it sounds stupid, but a 2019 study from the University of York showed that bizarre associations increase name recall by up to 80%. 80%. Your brain loves weird. Weird means interesting. Interesting means worth remembering. But here's a real hack. Tell your brain why you need to remember this person before you meet them. This person could be important for my project. They might become a friend. I'll see them every week. See, when your brain knows there's future relevance, it pays attention differently. Instead of doing threat assessment, it does relationship building. Different mode entirely. And here's something nobody talks about. If you're bad with names, tell people. I'm terrible with names, but I'm working on it. You're Jennifer, right? Now your brain is engaged because you've made it a challenge. And your brain loves challenges. Also, when you admit you're bad with names, the pressure drops. And when pressure drops, your amygdala calms down. And when your amygdala calms down, well, suddenly you have working memory available for... Wait for it. Remembering names. So I want to know, what's your worst name forgetting story? Did you forget someone's name while they were talking to you? Or call someone the wrong name for months? Drop it in the comments below. I promise you're not alone in this. And honestly, these stories are hilarious. Now, if you want to dive deeper into how your brain processes social information and how to hack your memory systems, we cover all this in our Brain Coach certification at brainacademy.com. Brain out. Sharp.